So here we are. Here we are. Uh, Johnny. Picking up where we left off. Yes. So I think it's fair to say the uh, in the last episode, um, it was philosophical. It covered a wide you know, range of topics. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was subjective. Uh, we were drawing from our own experiences of, of, of life. And people listening to it will... They could they could be raging, you know. That's never going to work for me, yeah. or, or, or um, you know. Yeah, we touched very briefly on practicalities, didn't we? Yeah. But um, yeah, and uh, what I find fascinating is that we're trying to we're trying to put a, a, you know we're, we're trying to conform and yet remain creative. Mm. In other words, there is no one way to do this. I mean, even you and I, we go about it very differently, don't we? And have done. Yeah. And actually, I don't mind saying this. You know, I am older than you. Better looking, but I am older. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And you were my student, but actually, genuinely, I've learned a lot from you. And that's, that's the best business to be in yeah that's the best place like i i I firmly i genuinely genuinely believe this that the best business especially when you're in the the people business yeah that's what we are yeah yeah the best business works when it's a win-win yeah you know and 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 by win-win it doesn't necessarily mean equal pay we should talk about that. Yeah. It just means I'm I'm really happy with the conditions that yes. I yeah. I'm working yeah. in. And I'll, g- I'll give you a very quick example of that. Four thousand years ago, I used to work in a, a a big band. It was a Rat Pack tribute band. Yeah, and we used to do um, the, we used to do the show live at the Sands, the album that you know. Oh yeah. Was, yeah, Frank Dean and Sammy live at the Sands in Vegas, and that was our show. That was the show. Mm. We had a Frank, a Dean, a Sammy. Yeah, they were equity. They yeah. were actors. Yeah, so they got an equity fee, which is far higher than the right. than the, than what the musicians got. Yeah, yeah. But nobody minded because everybody was happy. Yeah, and 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 that was a huge lesson in professionalism, a form of professionalism for me because because. All I had to concern myself with was the conditions that I was working mm. under. Mm. Was I looked after? Yes. Was I fed? Yes. Was I warm? Big yeah. one for me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, transport, flights, hotels. I didn't have to think about anything. Mm. And I got a professional rate. Yeah. I think it, I knew I wasn't getting paid what Sammy got. Yeah. I w- perhaps worked harder. Mm-hmm. Didn't matter because mm. my rate was good. Yeah, that was a big lesson for me in a, working in a, a touring show. Yeah, a, a, a big business lesson. It was also a, a, a big lesson because th- there were contracts. Yeah, um, and timings. You will be here then. Mm. You will load in, and I was like. And, and it felt great. Yeah, yeah. It's a joy to be a part of those shows. Yeah, it, I felt respected. <clears throat> that you know, all of those yeah. things. All of the, you yeah. know, of, of, of. But actually, if I sit in here now with you and reflect on it, there's no negative coming here. Um, it, it was it was business, and I was a service provider. I wasn't. I don't think I was practicing my art. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was performing a service. Yeah, you called it the entertainment industry in the last episode. Yeah, 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 and it's a huge industry, and it's and we all need it. Uh, uh, um, uh, human beings, we need it, and I think I think we need that as much as we we need to go. I, I need to go to the VNA mm. or somewhere like that and marvel at, at what I'm looking at. And often ask, ask, ask myself, like, what on earth is that? I don't yeah. understand what yeah. that is. But isn't it amazing? Yeah. yeah. So art for is its sake is still business. Yeah. But it may never generate a penny. And, I, and, and you know, it's coming around to your, your argument in the previous episode. Everything you've done is valid. Everything you've done is valid. 
the 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 difficulty you've got and and, and it is it is a challenge is sustainability yeah and 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 i i try i try to view them as as departments mm. i don't mind what the r and d department's <laughs> doing because it, it it it's not designed to make money it's yeah. designed it's designed to further an art form it's yeah. designed yeah. to to it has its own <coughs> remit and 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 when the money runs out or the time runs out well it, it does yeah but the cogs don't stop turning yeah well this was kind of the crux of my point previously everything i do is designed to sustain my ability to keep practicing the art form yeah and that does involve taking decisions sometimes that are contrary to the art form yeah i'd have loved to take that festival slot but I didn't slash couldn't slash wouldn't because it wasn't financially sustainable. Yeah. But that allowed me to do other things that sustained me and allowed me to further research obscure snare drumming techniques yeah. and things like that. <clears throat> so I, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because um, not enough of us, I would argue, think on that macro level. People mm -hmm. are very micro and and gig level gig economy you know we know that phrase exists in our in our <coughs> in our consciousness yeah it's used on the news yeah you yeah know? um because people haven't and i hope our book helps people with this or even these these episodes you need to take a step back and think well um if there is a need to make a living what living do i need to make well i got out of the gig economy because it wasn't sustainable. Yeah. Because I, I was sitting there. I remember it really vividly. I was sitting there thinking, my entire livelihood depends on that phone ringing. It depends on somebody having a show and deciding at that point that I was the person they needed on that show. And then they had to call me and I had to be available. And that's what, that all those things had to be in place for me to earn 50 quid on a Saturday night. And I remember... The times I did have a gig on a Saturday night, I'd be driving to it thinking I was hot shot because, well, I've got a gig on a Saturday night. Of course <laughs> I have. I'm a musician. That's what musicians are supposed to be doing. Yeah. And then on the Saturday nights that I didn't have a gig, of which there were many, sitting there feeling like an abject failure because all the real musicians are out gigging tonight and the phone didn't ring for me, which was, we talked about, you know, the youthful mindset or a young or an immature mindset in the previous episode. But nothing about that was sustainable. There was no way I was going to make a sustainable wage for myself, even if I was gigging every week. The amount of money I'd have had to be paid per gig to make even minimum wage was just impractical. Yeah. So I think COVID was the um, catalyst for me. I lost all my gigs like most musicians, musicians did. And I made absolutely zero effort afterwards to get them back again because my mindset had changed. Yeah. Yeah. I stopped in 2012. Yeah. Uh, needed to, had to. Um, wanted to spend time with my children, never looked back. Yeah, I, I never looked back. But I wonder if it's just worth clarifying. Separating the term and the attitude of gig economy compared to playing live music. Again, limiting to the music industry because that's just all I know. I still play live music. Yeah. I still play live shows and I get paid for them well. Yeah. But it's not gig economy. These are treated like your rat pack. They are treated like a professional project, like a service. But, but you're in a, a different sphere, aren't you? Right. It, 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 if, it, if it was the football league, you know, you're, it, you're not Sunday league in it, are no. you? No. You're not playing for fun or the joy no, of it. No, you're, but you're right. It's a, different, it, it, it's a different sphere because the whole band, one of the bands I'm working with at the moment, they treat the whole thing like a business venture. Mm. So there is a venue, there is an engineer, there are ticket prices, there are contracts, there are, ven as you say, be here at this time, load in at this time, sound check at this time, play yeah. for this time, here's your money, go home. Yeah. And you know, transport is provided, accommodation is provided, food is provided, but we've got a set list, we've got set rehearsal times, and it's all included as part of my fee, or as, as alongside my fee. Yeah. And that is... That, then it's a job, isn't it? Yeah. But that's not the gig economy. 
No. The, the gig economy was me hoping my phone would ring to get a local band on a local show that might get 50 quid for the night. And you can scale that up and you can scale that across into different industries. You know, I, I, I don't know how it works for an artist or a photographer, but I'm sure it's the same, hoping a random call will come in compared to making your own work or treating things like a, a business venture, a sustainable business venture. There's, uh, and within all of that as well, there's perceived value. Um, so if, if, if you need a family portrait, um, there's a perceived value because the, the, that industry, you know, they all do competitor analysis, yeah. which is another business term. Yeah. And they all know what to charge. Yeah. And, and they're within a few quid of each other. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and it's accepted. You go into a photographer's studio, it, it's like, ooh, you mm. know, it's accepted. You watch, you, you, go to, you go to a bar of an evening where you're, you're there to relax and be entertained and then the people on, on, in the corner, it's not going to be on a stage, they're mm. in the corner. yeah are laughing and having fun doing it mm. well it's not work is it no and that's okay right we're not making a value judgment here or no. a moral judgment no 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 and, that, and, and no you're right and that's important but it, it the the environment the, all of it, it all of those factors make us all um subconsciously put a value on things so uh, what i mean is Take take the shows that you're working have been working on recently, yeah. or others, where you go to a venue to watch the show. Mm. So it's 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 yeah. a different animal. It is, it is, and it frustrated me to no end. I was doing a gig pre-COVID, mm-hmm. and we were a house band. We we had a residency, and we played something like every second Saturday night. Yeah, and we were doing jazz. And yeah, we were very good, and. We played high quality music with high quality musicians to a full bar until midnight on a Saturday night. Yeah. And each member of the band that we were a trio, we'd come in with 50 pounds in our pocket. And at the time, it just about ticked enough boxes that I carried on doing it. Yeah. Because I thought, well, I love playing the music. I feel great being out on a Saturday night playing music to a high level, playing to a full bar of appreciative, mostly people. And the 50 quid is just about enough to get me out of the house. That stopped when COVID happened. And in the years following COVID, that same venue got in touch again and said, do you want to pick up your position again? Do you want to resume the position? And I basically said, no, I can't do it anymore for that fee. Mm. I said, brass tax, the fee you are paying the band, I would need you to pay us individually. And he said, no, can't do it probably means won't do it because there's someone else that would do it for the same fee Always. down the line and that was that that was and i could i could see that as i'm out of the job or i could see it as well it was time to move on mm. that was becoming potentially a toxic situation because that caliber of musicians playing that time of night i mean in any other line of work that would be overtime and a half right playing saturday night till midnight working saturday night till midnight you'd be on all sorts of overtime yeah yeah i i've had lots of um futile conversations with people where where i've I've, i'll give you an example um where where you're right but it you know you might as well climb everest it would be easier um we you and i've got a friend who um works on the ships Mm mm-hmm uh, he is in the entertainment industry. I would I would argue, um, and is employed or otherwise to be there and perform that service. Yeah. So he's not he's not uh, practicing his art in the truest sense. Yeah. He is delivering his service to entertain lots of people. He's applying his trade. He's applying his trade. Yeah. yeah. Right. If you then bring that round to. The situation that you're talking about, um, it would be easier, more lucrative, beneficial for, for the band to be frankly to be employed. Yeah. You know, the, the, because um, the the bar owner will be looking at their bottom line, thinking, "Well, I, I can't afford that." 
and and that's a culture thing because mm. you could build the culture like there there are venues in in in, in Nottingham where they build the culture where it's all about paying the band. Yeah. And it works very well. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I, I don't, I don't believe it. No. I, I, I know it happens. Of course it happens. Yeah. But I, I, I don't believe it or I don't believe in it. I don't believe for a moment that venue couldn't afford the fees I asked. No, it, it, it's culture. It's about wanting to. Yeah. They would, they would make the entire band's fee in probably three tables worth of service. Easy. Yeah. So, and so on a busy Friday or Saturday night, they'd cover it within an hour, mm. t- 10 minutes, 20 minutes, yeah. you know, one table, three tables. But you're right, it, this perceived value, yeah. which we have talked we talk about in the first few chapters, um, you wanted to talk a bit about fees. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've made notes. Um, you know, you're right, we do talk about it in, in when we... We set out, don't we, in the book that there's 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 a, a genuine disconnect between the top end mm-hmm. and 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 the, the grassroots yeah. do it for real, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, let's let's work on the basis that that um, we're going to teach a bit. Yeah. Um, and we decide we we look around and we say, right, I'm it's going to be thirty pounds an hour. Right. We don't know why it just is. Just is. Okay. Just is. Yeah. Because I'm worth it. Yeah. Right. Why yeah. not? Well, th- there's two paths to take, and I would like us to take both very, very, very quickly. Okay. Uh, but this isn't this isn't a lecture or a lesson. Okay. All right. These these are just examples. I'm clinging on. Okay. You're ready. I'm ready. Okay. Before we even get to taking one penny off another person, we we we've got to consider setting up our practice. Right. So we need equipment, and then we need space to put that in. That will come at a cost of rent, probably, or you know, you might be brave enough to pay for something to be built yeah. somewhere, but where? Yeah. Um, light, heat, furnishing, repairs, insurance, first aid, fire. Um, and then let's imagine that you're successful. One year hence, mm. you're going to need accountancy, yeah. and you're going to need to pay several taxes. Yeah. So that all of those costs are real and mm-hmm. occur before you before you start. Yeah. So then, then there's a real question then of how many thirty pounds do I need? Right. Then? And that that's before my perceived value. Yeah. That's before. Well, what do? Surely I'm worth more than that. Yeah. Well, the market might not might not agree. Might not agree. Yeah. And th- there's. It's so complicated because um, thinking about your uh, scenario where there are others to do that work. Yeah. There are. Who will undercut you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and okay. Well, um, okay. Mm. How much? Yeah. Because, of course, people naturally measure it against what they earn. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, but it's one to one. It's 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 high end development yeah even on it even on its most relaxed yeah but it's just my hobby i want just want to come and Mm. learn a few chords Mm. or sure great Mm. but all of those all of those costs Mm. exist that they just exist Mm. and 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 they're going up and they're going up at a rate of knots at the moment yeah so what it, it's painful for a creative to 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 accept this, but but in in the, in its crudest sense, you're, you're selling real estate, and the mm. real estate is your time. Yeah, precisely. And and be, be, because you're 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 not dealing with the practice of your art. Yeah, it, it, it's it's the service provision end of it. Yes. Same is true of the the entertainment side. Uh, you know, it, it, um, the. You have to start. You have to start all the way back to. Um, you have to cut yourself in half, even if you're a sole trader, and say, "There's, there's an amount of money that I need to earn yeah. to stay alive." Yeah. And you and in that, and I would really advocate that people think gross in that term. Yeah. So, you know, before tax, yeah. because tax will have to be paid. It's going to be paid anyway. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so what do you need to earn? <clears throat> Great. Let's park that because that's a conversation that we should have in a moment. But yeah. So 
there's the private person. Yes. Then there are the costs of running the business. What the business needs to make to sustain life, yeah. yeah. And then and then from there you'll start to reach the ability to to get to a break even analysis. Yeah. Then you'll look at it and say, okay, there aren't many hours in which I can actually trade. It's mm. a bottlenecked mm. service. It's mm. an out of school, out of hours yeah, yeah. evening. Am, am I willing at this stage to work every evening because that's all the reputation? Yeah, I don't have the reputation where I can attract other professionals that can come to me at 10 in the morning. Yeah. So then then all of a sudden you start to think to yourself, <coughs> I'm, I'm forcing myself out of the market because with... I'm brand new to the market. I don't have reputation or works of art that back up what I'm talking about yeah. or professional credentials. Yeah. And I'm already having to charge more than the competitors. Yeah. You then need to take the the, the, the you then need to take the decision that you should be doing it part time, I would yep. I would advocate. Yeah. Because if you can reduce what you need to take from the business, yep. you've got more of a chance of actually getting getting there. Yeah. These are the these are the crude realities the harsh realities that creatives don't automatically go to at mm. the beginning of their career mm. it's probably why you and i fell out so mm. much at the beginning because mm. i wasn't aware of them either yeah until yeah. until i was <clears throat> faced with you know those bills um you know in in a inadequate working environment that was you know costing every penny i had to keep warm in the winter and every yeah. penny i had to keep cool in the summer yeah let alone before the quality of the stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, but then compare that fee to what people earn. Yeah. In, in, you know, we're not in LA, we're not in London. Compare that fee to what people earn. £30 an hour at full-time employment is £62,000 a year. Yeah. Well, what would a person have to do to earn that? Now, I'm not saying we're not worth it. Mm. I'm saying how do we achieve it? Yeah. How do we sustain it? Yeah. It's hard, and you're not you're not taking thirty pounds an hour, thirty eight hours a week, are you? No, you know, no chance. No, there's no chance because within that within that you'll you'll have the delivery of what you do, yeah. So the chargeable stuff, yeah, the time, yeah, yeah. But then you'll have the research, mm-hmm. the development, marketing, governance. You know, at some point you're going to sit down and do your accounts. Many years ago, I was at MLC. I was teaching one day, and the mother of my student I was taking payment from her at the till and she made a comment along the lines of why is it so expensive for just half an hour Mm. and then she said what about people that can't afford it yeah and I didn't I I, again I was a young man at the time and I didn't really know how to answer it and I said I, I made light of it and I smiled and said well I'd like a Ferrari but I can't I can't afford it why is a Ferrari so expensive? And I, I tried to make the point that you're not paying for half an hour. You're paying, and, I, and I, I did kind of skirt on some of these issues you're talking about. I said, from my perspective, you're paying for the years it took me to get to the point where you're happy to put your child in a room with me mm. and teach him something that is valuable. On a professional level, you're paying for the fact that you're leaving your child in a building with strangers that's warm, safe, heated, and all the things you've talked about, safeguarding yeah. in place. Yeah. You're not just paying for half an hour of a lesson. You're paying for everything that facilitates that lesson. Yeah. And it, uh, yes. Yeah. And suddenly that, that money she was paying didn't seem like very much. No, but then but then take a step back to to... Um, the, the money's real, first of all. Yeah. It, it is real. Yeah. But you think about um, we have to pay we have to pay corporation tax, employers, national insurance, contributions to pensions. Yeah. That's uh, you know that's that's before the um, insurance. Yeah. <clears throat> if you've got public sector contracts, um, you 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 won't get paid on time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you you, you know because they, they they don't they don't work in that immediacy. Yeah. In, in, they can't. It's yeah. public money, and it needs yeah. it needs auditing yeah. because everybody's accountable. Yeah. Now that's not their fault. It just takes time. Um. But you want paying on time. Yeah. 
So I'm the risk taker. I have to take the risk. Um, and that's my decision. I'm all right with that. That's okay. But that, that has an impact on, on the cost. Because if, you, if you've got to finance that, there needs to be enough money in the bank to make sure that, that you, the teacher, get paid every month even though either business might not have. So how do we how do we juggle that then? When on the one hand, there's all of these things to take into account that you've just talked about that need paying for. Mm. Our perceived value, our self-perceived value and our value as perceived by others, but also what the market will allow. Because I, I can sit down and go, all right, well, look at my experience, look at what I offer, right, I'm going to charge £60 an hour. Yeah. And to, to your average customer... They're never going to do that for any sustained period of time. The most dedicated might come for one or two. But my after school crowd who are local kids who are going through their grades and things like that, their parents are not going to pay £60 an hour for a week or even half that for a half an hour. The market won't allow it. No, They will go somewhere else. They know how good I am. That no matter how much they like me and trust me and rate me, they will not pay that. The, honestly, you need a, a person would need to look at their business model mm. and diversify. Yeah, and change. it's not a one size fits all, is it? No. So, a couple of workable examples. Now, you know, this is Marmite. Mm. You know, um, you might have to teach more than one person at once mm. to make it affordable for both of them to attend, mm. with the understanding that. If, if you want me on my own, yeah, of course it costs more, yeah. you know, equally. And, and, and this, this works for us at MLC, you know, we, we offer courses. So if you want, um, if you want to do collaborative work, mm. music production, where you're part of a team, well, that's, that's one fee. Yeah. If you want to do, um, the level six undergrad diploma, mm that's another thing yeah. because it's akin to what you in fact it's not even akin to what you'd study at university mm. it's not it's, it's it's not even a third the price yeah. yeah but it's more expensive yeah 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 because it has to be so i was teaching a chap from washington dc in yeah. the week american guy yeah and he commented on how cheap i was yeah now he paid my full fee Okay. You know, there was no discount. There was no block booking discount or anything like that. He he paid the full fee up front as any student of mine who knows me. And it was it was out the blue. And I asked him, I said, where, where did you find me from? You know, why? Because there are loads of great teachers near you. And he said he'd seen some of my material online, really liked the way I teach. I'd been recommended, which was great or wonderful to hear. And he couldn't believe how cheap I was compared to the teachers near him. Now he didn't. He didn't mean that in a oh, well, you were the, just the cheaper option. But he he did comment that it was it was noticeably cheaper. Whereas I thought, well, to me, that's that's my you know my upper range of fees. It's not cheap over here. But then it occurred to me. I was talking to you about this before we started. There are musicians who are well known who charge in the hundreds for an hour. Yeah. There's, there's one bassist I mentioned who is incredibly accomplished. Yeah. And he charges about $250 yeah. for a single hour. Now, I'm sure he's not charging that to any local students he has that come any, you know, half an hour a week or something. Right. But to me, if I wanted a bass lesson with him, that's what I'm paying. And is that, I guess that's what you're talking about. There's there's different products and different services depending on the need, the reach, the clientele. Yeah. Yes. Um some of the mentors that I work with uh, in, 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 in the business world, the commercial world, they're, they're 1,800 a day. Crying. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but you, don't, you don't engage with them for one day either. Yeah. Because, because what, what, you're, what you're asking them to do and, and therefore what, what you will benefit at the other end far exceeds... Um, that that fee. So where's the value judgment then? Because I I remember use I I used to think thirty pounds an hour was a lot of money, mm. and I now charge more than that. 
Yeah. And there comes a point, I, I mentioned 60 pounds. Like I, that's less than I charge. Yeah. No, sorry, that's more than I charge. That's more than I charge now. There's a value judgment to be made. I'm worth this, but I'm not worth this. Or I'm worth this, but the, the market won't sustain this. So where, do, where does it fit in? If I'm looking at, if, if I want to take a lesson with a world famous drummer yeah. and they're $300 for an hour, there's only so much information that can be imparted in an hour, right? And there are many teachers who can impart the same quality of information. Yeah. So at what point do I decide, well, drummer X is worth my $300 for an hour, whereas drummer Y down the road, I'd never pay that. You know, this perceived value, where does that, where does that extra value come from? Well, there, there is a brand value. There is a brand value and there's, there's an experience value. Mm. So the, again, even teaching youngsters is, is, is service industry. Yeah. Or, um, and, and, you know, an out of school um, activity. It's a pursuit. Yeah. So you can only charge what the market will sust- uh, allow you to yeah, charge. Yeah. The the difficulty that 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 you and others have is is the one to one model. There's mm. one of you and not mm. much time mm. because you because of the the need to do the creative. Yeah. So you you've, you've already in, unless you diver, diversify your business model, you've capped your earnings. Mm. <clears throat> That that's it, uh, and unless your art actually sustains the rest of it, yeah. And and there, I know I keep repeating myself here, but I, I believe it. There's 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 a very big difference between service providing and art. So at the level where I'm paying someone three hundred dollars for an hour, that's brand. But arguably, we're also touching on the art there. It, I'm not just Are getting you? Uh, well. The, let's imagine let's imagine you and I today we're going to LA yeah right um, I, I'm in economy and you're in first class right we're on the same plane yeah we get on and off virtually the same time yeah what's the difference the we, experience the experience yeah the comfort yeah yeah uh, the level of service but my point is I know what you mean I know what you mean but my point is that I'm not going to go to superstar drummer X at $300 yeah. To, le- to learn the basics. Um, there's no need. No, precisely. So they are marketing themselves as the highest end. You are coming to me for the top end of the art form. Not, here's a paradiddle. Yeah, it, it, so it, 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 it's Maslowian, you know, it, it's it's psychology. Um, you... you um, I... I learned this recently through another job that I do. Mm. Um, when when I'm when I'm paying, when when I'm saluting somebody, I'm 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 paying a compliment to the crown. Right. That that that's that's the tradition. You pay the compliment to the crown. So if you salute an officer, you're off talking the in cr- a military context. Yeah. Right. So right. You, you 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 when you salute an officer of the crown, you're complimenting the commission, you're complimenting the fact that that person has been put there by the monarch as, right, as right, their right. representative. Yeah. Get past the rank. They're a person. Yeah. Bring that round now. So so I, 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 I learned that only recently. And, and you know, we're, we're, yes, you pay the compliment because that's what you're meant to do. Mm. Now we can talk. Yeah. You bring that all the way around to the artist at the other end. Yeah, you're you're paying the rank. You've acknowledged their standing, their yeah. position, their achievements above their ability. Right now, I, you know, I'm not saying that they're not that they don't have ability. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying that. But their ability to impart information in an hour. Yeah, it is. It, 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 you're, you're uh, f- forgive me, everyone. You know, you're wasting your money. Yeah. You, what can you gain in sixty minutes that yeah. I that I can't give you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or that you can't give me? Yeah, yeah. It, like, you'd need to you'd you'd need to go in. This is why mentorship's expensive and all the rest of it. 
um, it is that it, there's nothing I can give you. There's nothing I can give you in an hour. Mm. Mm. I just can't do it. So does does that mean then these musicians or any form of artist shouldn't be charging these prices? Or are they in their remit to do so? No, because, I mean, that's the capitalist economy that we've subscribed to. You mm. know, like you, they can charge whatever they want. Mm. You know, if, 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 if a person will pay it, great. Mm. But it, it, it's not the same as buying the Ferrari. Yeah. Um, because the, the engineering of that, it is better than yeah. my car. Yes. It just is. It just is, yeah. Yeah, and and it, not only is it is it a wonderful piece of engineering, it's also a beautiful thing to look at. Like there's 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 lots in that. Yeah, where you, yeah. you know, when when you're dealing with the uh, the information game, mm. the uh, you know, well, it. I, t- I tell you why it doesn't work is is because it didn't work for me this year. Um, I had. Um, a student that fell out with me because he, he didn't learn anything in three hours. Mm. He wasn't, wasn't going to. Yeah, never was going to. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean, three hours? Three hours um, maths tuition. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to pass your A-levels on that, are you? Yeah. Three hours in the gym. Yeah, exactly. It's not one salad, is it? Yeah. It's, it's not... Yeah. This, the, this work of art you're sitting across, yeah, Johnny, yeah. Is, is not one burger, so no. it's not one salad no, to fix, no. right? So, <laughs> so what I'm saying is, what I'm saying, how, how it's not our fault. Yeah. It, it, um, it, it, it's the harsh reality that people, um, sometimes people don't even know what question they're trying to ask, let alone what answer they want. Mm. Um it's a harsh reality to all of us to face into. You know, people have less money. Yeah. yeah. Um, We're not a thriving economy, are we? No. Moment? And times are hard. Yeah. You know? and, and, you know, anyone who anyone who goes to work is working hard. I would, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyone yeah. who's really, like, like, you know, making a family work on whatever level, whatever that family looks like doesn't is irrelevant to me, but like making making it work, making themselves work, making their life work mm. is working hard to do it. Yes. Then when you, you, you look at your, you know, we're, we're sitting here thinking, well, we've got, you know, you go back to episode one where you said to me, well, you've got all these plaudits and, and you've got, so do you. And yeah, we've, yeah. We've, got, we've got all the art that we've done or, or academic texts that we've done surely we're worth this then yeah well we are but we're not to the consumer yeah yeah we, if, <clears throat> if we work um if we work in the private sector the consumer market we can only charge x the only way that we will be able to earn the kind of money you're talking about is if you get into different funding models yeah. models where you yeah. start working for universities or you yeah, start yeah. working for um frankly the corporate world or, mm. or the or the mm. funded world where yeah. where you know you might be getting projects funded by the arts council yeah that kind of thing yeah, yeah. um if, if you're trying to earn a living solely by um the private sector a consumer paying you mm. that's never been there's never been never been harder yeah never been harder no. let me ask you something then on this that ties in fees money and something we've talked about in previous episodes, which was ex- exclusivity or access to the arts yeah. and how art is for everybody. Now, you're going to have to forgive me because I'm going to sound quite harsh here. Mm. But I went to a panto over the weekend. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Unfortunately, <laughs> oh, yes, I did. Oh, OK. And oh, wow, OK. I'm not going to name any names, but it was not very good. OK. And I feel very bad for saying that because... It was an amateur dramatics group. Mm-hmm. And I fully support anybody who gets up on stage yeah. because they enjoy it and they want to give a performance. Yeah. And my daughter enjoyed it and all the kids in the audience enjoyed it. But the problem I have with it or the issue that I'm raising, I don't want to say I have a problem because at the end of the day it was a nice experience and it fulfilled its purpose. Yeah. The problem I have, though, the issue is that it was charged and billed as a professional event. So we paid money for a ticket Mm. and we had to follow, you know, we had to go to the venue and go into an auditorium and sit through two and a half hours 
of something that was qualitatively quite poor. You know, it, it didn't use professional performers and it was noticeable. Right. But they charge a professional fee for it. Or, the, you know, the, the ticket price represented a professional. This is this is a professional show. You are coming to see a pantomime. Yeah. And I wanted to get your thoughts on it because I was really conflicted because both my wife and I came out looking at each other going, that really wasn't very good, was it? <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. You know, we felt awful. I'm, I'm really trying not to be cruel here. And th- that's not to say that every performer on the stage was bad because they weren't. There were some good individual performers. <coughs> Excuse me. But for whatever reason, you know, it was an amateur society and people who had always wanted to got on stage and they did it. And we have extolled the virtues of that in previous episodes. And I will continue to defend that. Anybody that wants to do it should yeah. and should be encouraged to do it. I do not wish to sound like I'm trying to discourage that. But I can't help but feel it gets more difficult when you start charging a fee and promoting it as a professional service. You get into the entertainment industry, right? Because right. when you pay a ticket fee... yeah and you take your family to a theatre, you have an expectation of that service, mm-hmm. right? And it's the it felt like the equivalent of going to a restaurant that was billed as fine dining and coming away with fast food. Do you remember we spoke about the menu? Yes, I do. You know... Uh, that was an apt analogy then. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we, we've all been in, and, you know looked at the encapsulated menu that's four years old and yeah. we, so we want that lasagna yes. and that's not the that's lasagna. not what comes yeah yes yeah so so did your daughter enjoy it she did job done right is one argument is one argument right yeah because the, you, you know we all live the, through the joy of yeah, yeah, yeah 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 great yeah the menu is wrong isn't it yes so professional mm. what, what does you know, mm. what does that mean mm. and we discussed that in the, you know, what does that mean what, yeah you know so park that though for, for a moment you know as well as i do uh and our dear listener knows because i've babbled on about it forever is that you can't open the door without a cost no so that 10 pounds will have gone somewhere yeah well there was it, the everything about the stage show was high quality there was a stage there was a set and the set looked great. Yeah, because I would argue you wouldn't get that. And you wouldn't get sound, lighting, staging for a favour. Sure. So the set looked great. The lighting looked great. The sound worked great. There was huge sounds. There were fireworks. You know, there was a sound desk that looked like it cost about £400,000. So that's where all the money went. But when the performance itself is lacking, yeah. does that not undermine the entire operation? You've spent all this money on lighting... It does because 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 unless you're in the game, nobody else even knows there's a sound desk yeah, there. Right, right. You, 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 so it's like it's like going to watch um, any film, any film at the cinema, and I'm a massive fan of of it. All that, or, well, that wasn't very good, was mm. it? Yeah, but there was a thousand people employed to yeah. make that. Yeah, that four seconds of CGI cost half a million quid. Yeah, yeah. and so there's a thousand of us, a thousand creatives at work. Yeah. Uh, and all that comes with employing a thousand people. Hmm. And then what about the hundreds of people in the auditorium that you're sat in? But then here's the problem with that. You're talking about all the people involved with a rubbish film that hmm. were employed. I'm 99.9% sure that those performers were not paid a penny because they were considered doing it for the privilege. And that's the point of Amdram societies, right? You go along as a hobby and you yeah. get to go up on stage. And this is where I this is where I run into trouble because as I've said, as we've said, I'm all for everybody getting involved with the arts. Yeah. Talent is not an issue. It doesn't matter if you're the most tone deaf. I I can't sing. But if I wanted to, I should be able to go to an Amdram Society or join a choir, a community choir, yeah. and do it for the love of it, yeah. as should anybody. Yeah. But if I'm charging money for that, to come and see that, this is where that menu becomes difficult. Because why are we paying for professional sound engineers and yeah. a venue and yeah. 
you know, the safety regulations of the venue and the fire extinguisher and the lighting and the stage when the actual product is not professional. Because we paid a fee that I'm sure went towards the venue hire and probably paying some of the sound engineers, which is fine. But you've not paid the performers because they're amateurs. So then you get a le- you get an amateur performance. Yeah, but, but they're okay with that. But the audience aren't. Okay, the, the kids in the audience, they'll, they'll enjoy anything, right? Because they, they're five years old. Yeah. So yeah, I'm glad they enjoy it. That's fine. But from a... It, it raises so many problems from the perspective of what we're talking about because I think it blurs too many lines for me. Because if you are an amateur dramatic society, yeah, brilliant. Anybody should come along and have a go and enjoy themselves. But you're not you're not paying professional actors to do a performance, so let them perform for free. But then there's the big asterisk of, well, should we let them perform for free? Should, because we're undermining professional actors. We talk about this in the first chapter of the book. Yeah. Your full-time employed banker who plays blues guitar on a weekend for free undermines the professional musician trying to make a living in the local music scene, right? So goes the argument. So this, this is where I'm so conflicted with it because on the one hand, you either employ the actors and you put on a professional show or you use amateur actors and you put on an amateur show, but then you're getting people to perform an art for free, which we already say it's sort of taken some umbrage with. And then you're charging customers to come and see it and putting on an amateur show disguised as a professional entertainment. Mm. And do you, do you see my difficulty here? No, I, I do. I do. And, and um, so I do. Um, the, the 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 act of participating is 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 very important. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but even <clears throat> to participate, um, if I were a golfer, uh, I I I can't do it. I can't do it for free, can I? I yeah. You know, that's my hobby. Yeah. Um, the the, the distinguishing thing you. you what you're talking about. So here's here's what I've taken from what you've said, uh, and the, these are these are all assumptions. The production, sound, light, tech, all of that, and the venue is where the money's gone. Yes. But the the Amdram Society are okay with that because that that's enabled them to facilitate their hobby. Yes. And they think that they're doing you, a, you know, their community a great thing by putting on this show. Yeah. And the community thinks they're doing a great thing by coming along and supporting it. Yes. They and and I I am trying to advocate that you are all correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. To, but but, and and this this is where I struggle with the argument I made mm. in the book is that. They have every right to be there. Yes, absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, and I, yeah, you know, um, and they have every right to charge because unless um, unless every element of it was was free, therefore there was no charge. Yes, uh, you know, like like it's a community theatre and you come along for free. Sort yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, but who pays for that? Right, exactly. You know, exactly. Um, I don't know how I I I, I can't see a world, uh, uh, sadly, where you couldn't charge. No, I'm probably not doing myself any favors here by the way I describe it. No, I, I I know what you're. You know, I, I'm trying I, to raise it as a point of discussion. If I if I deliver a bad lesson to a student, mm. they're not going to come again. No, it, no, it is different. Be- I. I, I I know the argument you're trying to make that the 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 uh, the relationship with your student is pay me and I will ha- I will open doors yeah, yeah. for you to get better yeah but your student is the one doing the hard work right uh, the, the lifting you're you're working hard yeah yeah okay I know what you mean but your student's doing the they're lifting. the one that's actually got to do it yeah, yeah practice yeah. all you know yeah yeah right and and again you think about the, the person that that didn't like the, the lessons I was giving. That was the breakdown of that communication is that, you know, paying me, paying me for my knowledge and my time doesn't make you better. OK, so let's let's change the scenario then. This is a group that loves to cook. Yeah, it's a cooking group and they yeah. get together and they bake or they cook yeah. just for the love of it. They're not chefs. They're not. Yeah, bakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But then they open a restaurant mm. and they invite customers to come to the restaurant and they charge restaurant prices. And then lo and behold, you get less than restaurant standard food. Yeah. Again, it's that same conflict. Anybody should be allowed to cook, right? I love, I enjoy cooking. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bake bread. But if I open a bakery, that bread had better be good. Yes, but, but you're not paying for the bread, are you? No. You, you're paying for all the costs associated with facilitating selling the bread. So let me ask you this then. This, this amateur group, you know, God love them. I, I love the enthusiasm. It was brilliant. And they should all be praised yeah. for doing it. I'm really not trying to sound patronising. It was brilliant for all of them to step on stage. There were some youngsters on there. Um, they, at the end of the show, advertised the panto they're doing next year. Why should I, as a paying customer, forget, take my artist hat off, right? I'm an absolute devil's advocate here. Yeah. Why should I, as a paying customer, go anywhere near that panto next year when, for probably the same money or a little bit more, I could take my daughter to a professional one and she'd enjoy it more, but I would, en- or she might enjoy it the same, she might not know the difference, but I would enjoy it more because I get to see a professional show okay so you're paying for the environment you're paying for you're paying for the experience yeah. you're paying for good bad or ugly you're yeah. paying for yeah. it you're not paying the amdram people um it, it, you know we could go to a celebrity chef's restaurant and have a meal and then go somewhere else and have another meal but we are paying for the experience. Of course, the food will taste different. I, mm. I know that. Mm. Please don't shoot me down, people. Mm. But I know. It, but you're paying for far more than... Yes, than, the than, restaurant experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, but also, all the hidden costs of operating that business. But that's, that's to be expected from a professional endeavour, right? Yes. But, this is again that's this Amdram group is not a professional endeavor. Why should you go? Um, um, you should go to support the your community, but then is <laughs> does that not become a charity? Then no, it be no, um, you know, I'm donating to a community arts group in essence, but why not? Well, why not? But that's a different thing, yeah, to me buying a ticket to a show. If I want to make a donation to a community arts group to facilitate amateurs on stage, I will do. The, the, the you have to take out uh, the education. Yeah. The um, if if you if you go in if you were paying the same money to go to see a group of undergrad students do an end of year thing. Yeah. And, and you were like, the, the, you know, they're clearly on their way. Yeah. They're clearly developing. Yeah. You'd feel great about that. Yes. Yeah. Because you, you can see the effort. Yes. Yeah. The uh, the Am- Amdram group need need a, need applauding, celebrating, and 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 I know I know that that's where you're at. I know yeah. I know that, and I know that that's not the argument that you're making. My 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 counter argument on purpose is that they can't do it for free. Mm. The amateur group wouldn't exist. Yeah, yeah. they just can't be there. Mm. And 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 that that sadly is 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 almost the checkmate. In, yeah. In, in the sense that um, they may not be very very good at it. Mm. Um, but they they even they can't operate for free. So does that place the onus then? the burden on society to fund the arts yeah you you uh, it's exactly that if you don't pay for it it's, so, not, it's not gonna happen it's not gonna happen mm-hmm. and then presumably the argument for many people who have nothing seemingly have nothing to do with the arts would shrug and say well we don't need am, am jam groups so give me your headphones yeah, right. That's what I mean. I mean, it was Churchill, wasn't it, who said, "What are we fighting for, if not the arts?" I'm not. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he did. I think it was Churchill. No, I know. I'm not, there's, there's there's a debate of whether he said it. Oh, okay, might be a mis misquote. Yeah, but it's a nice quote. No, let's give it to him. You let's know, give like, it. Let's allow it. <laughs> yeah, let's allow it. But yeah, well, yeah. If not the arts, what are we doing? This right, for? right. Um, the sentiment. Yeah, I like that though. 
You can't. Um, I mean, I'm not looking for an answer here. No, 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 no. I know, and 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 I know that you're not. You know, there's 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 an immense amount of bravery getting up there and doing it. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, well, I wouldn't do it. No. But, um, no, it, it's very difficult. It, it's it's it, it's um it's a it, there are statistics and the, and they're in the book that um by the time a young person becomes a teenager and starts making their own decisions about who they are and what they want to be and what they want to become they access art very differently yes from that point yes and it's often passive i e <clears throat> uh headphones on or via the cinema or via a game yeah yeah, um, it's not an active pursuit. No, uh, and and the, the the decrease is is vast. I mean, it's precipice stuff. Like mm. you know, you, you, um, we hear in in the UK do very well with 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 the the younger people and undergraduate age onward. Like it, it's the bit in the middle where the young people will explore and find out who they want to be. Where we lose them, yeah, on on the on yeah. the whole, uh, it, there's there's so many arguments that we can't win in this, you know, because because like like you can access my music or your music for free, yeah. Well, why would you pay then? Mm. Why would you pay? Mm. Why would anyone pay? So, it, the way the way we're talking about it here, then, we I think we're making it sound like it's impossible to survive in the creative industries. Well, we, 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 I recall comments we made in earlier episodes where we said that the chances are you would have to teach. It's the Venn diagram. Yeah. And you are the, the best example of that because mm. you, you do lots of things to make Johnny Ink work. Yeah. So we have to accept then that it is possible. I mean, you and I are living proof of that as our millions of other people who work yep. in the creative industries but it has to come back round to my comments at the beginning of the, f- the previous episode that it's not going to look like the way we think it's gonna no be. it's not and it's it's the funding it's 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 the route to market it's the funding model that the that, that, that the creatives will have to get really savvy with mm. the consumer can't afford to pay for it well i i've done two major projects that have been arts council funded yeah which i am eternally grateful for yeah and i even through those did my best to produce work that had longer term impact yeah. sustainability impact but even that as brilliant as it is that such an organization exists to fund me and others doing obscure art yeah is not a sustainable business model, right? I can't sustain my livelihood based on hoping to get funding grants every two years. No. So if you if you push that ball over over the net to, to my business, yeah, we are a community interest company. Are you right? So we, uh, yeah, uh, again, and uh, you know, we don't make enough noise about that. I don't think, but we are a CIC, right? So for those that don't know, we uh, reinvest any profit that we make into our community. Right. Which is, uh, you know, the Music Learning Collective. It, it, it's for people that can't access the arts. Right. Um, now, we know um, that, that, that the Arts Council... And, 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 you know, if anyone from the Arts Council wants to reach out, please do and help <laughs> us, but... They 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 can't fund organisations or or individual practitioners forever. They they you you'll know this in your own applications. You've you've got to make your work sustainable. If if you're in a particular fund mm. that that that's you know that, that's looking for that. So yes. Yeah. If you're in if you're in for a, a career development fund or something like that, that's a di- that's a different ask. That's a different yeah. issue. Yeah. Yeah. But but. Um, no, they we we have to make we have to make a business case for we have to make the case that what we're what we're trying to get funded for is needed. There is a need for it. Yeah, there's a community interest to it. Yeah, yeah. But also, we could sustain people after the funding stops. 
So what's the answer then? Like, yeah. how, how does anybody survive in this industry? Really, because there are, there are pitfalls for every route we seem to take. So it, there, there needs to be a reality that, that uh, of the type of industry that it is. Yeah. Um, people, people will pay very good money uh, for, for food. Yeah. Uh, and, and since high-speed internet, even for health. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, you know, the need to look and feel good actually went through the roof when high-speed internet came into yeah. the air. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, in terms, and, and again, we talk about this in the book, there is a huge disconnect between the people on the ground and the people at the top. The people at the top, we we are very, I don't want to say very happy, but we accept that we will pay north of £100 to go to a concert. Yeah. Um, but nobody would pay me the price of a Big Mac meal. Yeah. Probably for my music. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why? More perceived value, I perceived guess. Value. I mean, are we inherently working in an industry or in a society where art is just inherently undervalued? Um, I don't think it's as simple as that. Um, I, I, I know exactly, I, I really understand what you've just asked, but um, people would say, well, of course I value art. Mm. Of course, and, and they would mean it. Yes. They really would mean it. But they couldn't. They, they they can't afford to sustain us. So so what we need to do is we we really need to look at this as a business. And, yeah. And, and and probably accept that that we will need to go into several sectors to make our business work. Yeah. The Venn diagram. Yeah. Yeah. Or that it might have to be a very worthwhile part time pursuit. Mm. You you. You know, no need to share this now. You know, um, I, I'm ha- I'm happy to share it. I don't make any money from my music, mm. but I I de- I define myself as a musician. Yeah, it's that it's that lifestyle business we talked about, yeah. isn't it? We conduct the business to facilitate the lifestyle, which does include free time and flexibility with things like that, but also includes the luxury of pursuing an art form. Yeah. We we say that people believe themselves to have value, to hold the arts as valuable, but that doesn't extend to me specifically practicing the snare drum no. or, or writing obscure books about French drumming history that they're not interested in. Yeah. But we like to think as a society we hold artistic pursuit as valuable. So I think it ultimately boils down to that conflict. I want to find a way to sustain my artistic pursuit and professionalize that. In, I mean, no, nobody would dispute. I think that I that I perform my art to a high quality, to a professional quality. Yeah, right? I don't as, think that. Yeah, I, I think don't. everybody would agree, and, and as do all you know, professional musicians out there, or any other art, artist that charges. But I could be the best drummer in the world and I walk down the street and nobody's going to give me money for that, right? I can say, hey, guess what? I'm the best drummer in the world and I can prove it. And they'll go, that's brilliant. Here's £100. It's, it's not going to happen right? yeah. because my drumming ability to that person on the street who's doing their shopping on a Saturday morning is not interested. They're only interested when they either like the drumming I'm playing, as in that I'm playing in a band they love or something, or they want to learn themselves. Yeah. But yes. But if you bring it all the way back round to the business argument, yeah. which is what we're discussing in, in, in this, is that's why sadly it it, it costs what it costs. Yeah. Because you can't you're not in uh you're not in the service industry. Mm. You you can't um you can't charge for this. Mm every moment of mm, the day. Mm. I mean, you, you and I are not being paid to sit here now. No. To produce this podcast. No. But there is still a degree of speculation that it's going to aid in the promotion of the book, right? That it's it's not a completely charitable endeavour, is it? No, no, no. But but the even the even the books um are a means to an end, aren't they? Yeah. In, in, they it might facilitate more lessons or 
Yeah, I mean, we're not giving the thing away. No. Right? So the, there's, there's, it always comes back to this. I don't really know the point I'm making. I'm just, it's such a hard thing to try to cl- crystallize. I think, I th- so, yeah. So, again, I, you know, I keep coming back to it because the, the more, you know, the older I get and the, you know, the longer I've been doing it and the more we, we discuss it, and the, the more it makes, you know, it, it it's clearer to me that there, there is um, a mistake that's made that we're not charging for our art when we teach people. Mm. It's service. Yeah. You can only charge the market rate. Yeah. Um, working in entertainment is is, uh, you know, perf- uh, performing certainly, but but doing a job. Mm. It's still job level. Mm. The the art that you're talking about um, just has to just has to be produced and and exist for its own sake. Mm. And thank goodness for organisations like the Arts Council yeah. that that will help you facilitate that art. Yeah. Um, and you need that Venn diagram. You also need to appreciate that, that, that you will need to reach out to different parts of the world because we live in parts of the world where, you know, people, people won't, but people, there will be people in London today going to art galleries and, and paying paying money for people's art because they a they can afford it and mm. b they want to buy it. Yeah. Um. And I can remember a time. I'm not sure. I don't know if you can. I can remember a time when people had to pay to visit a museum. Mm, possibly. Yeah, yeah, it's not that long ago. Not that long ago. Mm. You talk about access; it, 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 you know, it needs to be available to everybody. It really does. But, but then, if you if you look at the V&A as an example, um, I'm a real fan of theirs. If you look behind the curtain, i.e., if you read their literature, yeah, you know they they they've got a very brilliant. Uh, business machine working behind the scenes on on funding projects that are 20 years long right because they've got to yeah they they just have to like like employing all of those people you know the the, the building itself the works of art the security yeah. the, the insurance you can't imagine the, how much it costs just to keep the doors open yeah each day. exactly yeah, yeah. exactly exactly so uh, but but that that's my point is they have a, a business division that 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 um focus itself on making sure that it is free at the point of access. Is the point of view. So for anyone listening to this then, I'm not sure we've clarified anything to anybody. If someone's if someone's listening to this thinking, well, I want to work in the arts. Yeah. I, I do X, Y, Z, whether that's music or painting or otherwise. Yeah. Have we uh, I mean, have we clarified anything today? I think I think what we've done is I think I think we've discussed how difficult it is. Mm. Can we give some hope? Yeah. I mean, you and, you and I are sitting here, right? That's. But 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 I, I would argue that I'm I'm in I I facilitate music education. Like I I, I yes, I I'm a creative practitioner. I'm very creative in in how I do it. Yeah. But the the, the production of of you know I I've had such fun this year making this this album that's yeah. about to come out. I'm not going to earn a penny from it. No. But it needed to be done. So, so I would go all the way back to our early episodes where it's like you you have to 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 be in business. You need um, multiple skill sets, yeah, multiple revenue st- uh, streams, the portfolio, the career, portfolio the, career, the passive income, yeah, yeah. And and do you remember in early episodes where we where we 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 applauded the young person who do bar shifts, be, yeah, uh, uh, because that took away. The desperation, frankly, you know, the the, the stress mm. of having to earn a living mm. is is diminished because you're you're earning whatever, and then you can go and do your practice your art form. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 uh, unless unless you're going to go and work for a film studio, or you know that kind of thing, you're. 
in, unless you're going to work in sectors where funding is taken care of, you you if if you want to make a living out of your art, you're either going to struggle or be amazingly successful. Mm. You will either capture the imagination of all of us. Yeah, and you become a megastar. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the middle ground for people like me is that the service aspect of my art form yeah. facilitates the creative aspect of my art. Yeah, form. and there's no shame in that. There's no apology in that, but that's the reality. Well, no, it keeps me happy. Oh. You know, I enjoy I enjoy all of the elements I work as. I enjoy teaching. I enjoy the shows I play. Yeah. The key is, it, the key, isn't it, is, uh, I would suggest, is to be creative within the Within teaching, all of it. Within all yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. To be a creative practitioner. Creative Practitioner is out now, physically, digitally, on Kindle. I think we've we've really touched some big topics today, but thank you, Paul. Thank you, Johnny. I, I Yeah, we, we, we've covered a lot of ground. We may have skimmed some stones across the surface rather than yeah. dug deep, but, but it, 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 um, it's a complex industry. It certainly is, and every path is different, isn't it? Yeah. We'll pick this up again. Yeah. See you next time. Thanks, Johnny.